So what is poison? See, poison is such a word that is so fraught with baggage and fear and so many perspectives on poison. Okay, so poison is, is when something is antibiotic. I mean, it's so aggressive that a human body could not eat it because the amount of B cells and T cells that would develop so quickly that the person would die from the amount of, of defenses the body builds up against that aggressive element. See, why people die from poison <clears throat> is not so, it's not so much directly, well, I mean, it is, but it isn't. That's just the first step is you drink something that is not FDA approved for, for anything that, that say it's a, it's a chemical, like a cleanser. And it says not for consumption. Okay. And then somebody does, drinks it and they shouldn't drink it. The body builds up such a defense against it that people die from doing things like drinking things that are not supposed to be, you know, ingested because of the improper use of it. And so the second part of how you die from ingesting a toxic poison is the T cells and B cells that develop that quickly and then cannibalize the person. And so then you're like, okay, so that's what poison is. So antibiotic, what is antibiotic? Because antibiotic is, it can be in so many different forms. It's not just a prescription drug or even like an essential oil mixed with a carrier oil. Antibiotic is, 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 is foods that are so aggressive in its energy as far as an antibiotic, like that, that's like, like it's like cinnamon or, or, um, jalapenos or very spicy foods. Antibiotic could be something that is targeting specific elements or specific, uh, life forms in the body, like using an antiviral, using an antiparasitic, antibacterial, antifungal. And anti-inflammatory. Those are all antibiotics. Okay. And then you can program the body to act like an antibiotic. You can use your own immune system because your own immune system is a heavy negative. And you can program your immune system to act like an antibiotic against your environment. That's the other perspective people don't realize. It's all in the wording in the medical holistic system. You come from this direction, people who are very narrow and one, 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 one mind or what is it? One dimensional biased only know about black and white for and against. And they're like, oh, well, you know, this, if this is antibiotic, I'm not going to take it. If, if I take this and it has monoclonal antibodies, I'm not going to take it. It's antibiotic. It has components of this. Well, okay, and then, then, then they develop a new technology that comes from the other perspective that someone doesn't even think about because they don't understand antibiotics. They don't understand their own immune system. They don't realize that their own T cells and B cells are so toxic because they've been taking so many antibiotics. Because if, if you all live in among a certain vegetation and you're all assimilated, what would be antibiotic? Because you all already released whatever excess programming. It's already in the, in the water supply or in the sewers and it's, and it's gone, processed, and released somewhere else. And so why is our society so sick? Okay, so, so then you program the body to then attack the environment that it is in there. So... You know all the antivirals, you know all those different medicines and and different therapies. And so instead of you taking a straight up direct antibiotic, now you've programmed your system to, to be antibiotic against the environment. To turn everything that you're exposed to, to be a weapon against you. And then your own immune system is what attacks you. <laughs> I mean, this is... And so there's so many different ways of, of attacking a problem. And the problem is all relative. 
what you think is not a problem, you're a problem to somebody else. When you think they're in your corner and really they're undermining you, whoever it is. You got to understand all sides of a story. That's what I'm saying. You got to understand the different perspectives, even in the business world, even in, in every single world. You got to understand every single side and understand how everything works. Because then you won't think that someone's being unfair or being, you know, uh, out of line or being, you know, business whole business has a specific reasoning behind why they do what they do. The reason why they're so successful is because they create a need, and the reason why they have to crack down is because they do not anticipate certain things happening, and they have to make up for it or have to then crack down on certain shit. And so there's always reasons of why businesses do what they do, why they're so successful, or they don't flourish. Okay. And so, and so anyway, so I, I, and then with the, with then realizing with the B cells and T cells and then the answers in the anus, and you think about, maybe that's the name of the book is the answers in the anus. <laughs> I'm going to write this down, actually. <laughs> I don't know if I'm, I don't know what I'm going to, oh, Lordy, this is so like, I don't know. The answer is in the anus. Yeah, so you're right. Anunnaki, the the anus was the first was the first human on this earth. The assholes were the first humans on this earth. Maybe everything started with the asshole, and then and maybe that's what it is. Is that when when a baby grows, the asshole grows first, right? Because you're coming from the umbilical cord, and that's the belly button, and that's probably attached to your asshole in some way. Yeah, because that's where the waste comes in. That's where the food comes in, right down there in the, the umbilical cord. So when you think of Anu as your anus, that's the first God, the God of the universe, everything. That's that's what's so ironic about the religious world is they're all like, ooh, everything is hoity-toity and and they're all like high and mighty and pious and everything resides around the freaking anus. <laughs> You're just like, oh, jeez. You know, I'm telling you, the irony, the, 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 the comicalness of all of this you you can't even like you don't even know how to how to behave because you just are just like I have just been reduced down to juvenile bathroom humor, but that's what it is. But there's so many children out here, not children like literally children, but there's so many people who act like children because they are living from their assholes. They literally are, and you have to. Your asshole is everything. You know when you had when I had hemorrhoids a long time ago. I had the yeast infections and I had all the urinary tract infections. I had everything going on down there. It was crazy. It was freaking crazy. So I didn't want to eat the fruit. I didn't want to eat this. I didn't want to eat that. I was told to stay away from this food, that food. So yeah, you're starving. Eh, I was still functional, but you knew I was going to be, I had a lifespan a couple of years ago. <laughs> and so then, you, then you're taking all these different medicines or people are getting surgery. Asteroid. Yeah. Hemorrhoid, asteroid. John, very good. <laughs> oh my God. So we get all these surgeries and getting parts of their asshole taken out. They get parts of all their different uh, down there taken out. Prolapsed vaginas. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, you name it. People have issues down there. People do. I heard so many stories of people's issues when I was in the beginning of the J juice. Like so many stories. And some are like, whoa, where the vagina is closing up. You're like, whoa, where did that come from? That is crazy when things like that happen to people. Okay. And all these B cells and T cells and all the experiments and the antibiotics and all the different programming of people's immune systems to combat different viruses that are basically people's immune system trying to battle it battle against other people's therapies and everything mutates and turns into one big cesspool of we have weird things happen here and weird things happen there. Where the heck? Well, you know, if we didn't have so many antibiotics, we didn't have any antibiotics, people weren't using aggressive therapies in the holistic world and the allopathic world, we wouldn't have all of this cancer disease and chronic illness. Imagine if, if in my little town, it's a little bubble and there was no hospital here. There was no, people weren't using antibiotics. People were, were in a homogenized zone. They, they, they all salted out. Now they're salting in and they don't need to do any really any kind of detoxes or 
I'm sorry, they don't have to do any kind of um, annual saltwater flushes because the environment is uh, relatively calm. The, the, the weather is, is bio or geoengineered in. So when you're in a, in a biodome, in a very homogenized biodome, and there wasn't an antibiotic to develop a virus. See, that's what people don't, that's what I get, is that antibiotics mutate the programming in the system, causing viruses that change programming. And so when you upload a virus, somebody's reaction to something new, what that new thing is, is somebody else's reaction to something else new. So when you're looking for, when you're opening up the tomb of Egypt, and it's all these different viruses, basically people's defense systems from antiquity. And I'm going to go play this timeline game of antiquity from BC days, okay? And there's these ancient viruses. That is somebody's defense system against something back then that we're not really aware that is around, that we haven't experienced it because everything was buried in the tombs or under sheets and sheets and sheets of ice. And then someone gets exposed to that. It changes their, it, it goes in, programs them. They, they, they either attract a mosquito or do something else. And, and their body also goes into fence. It takes the programming, takes aspects of it. And then the other parts of the programming then gets spit out. And then guess who else gets it? Everyone in their vicinity who's around him. Now let's say the person who was exposed to a virus from antiquity was in the mountains by himself and he went through some kind of infection. Maybe he died and then he decomposed and just buried under the earth. That virus wouldn't spread because there was no one around to, to carry it. It didn't jump from person to person because there's no one around there. It's only when you're exposed to something new from an ancient virus to something that was, you know, used as an experiment for therapies in a, in a lab or an animal got exposed to someone in a lab, mutated whatever they were doing in the lab. But if it jumped to an animal, it probably would jump to the human too, <laughs> but whatever. And then that's how the domino effect of new entities coming in. So that's, that's the thing, and, and that's the thing, and that, that we're, we're not going to get rid of, we're not going to get away from biotech, we're not going to get rid of, you know, antibiotics. 7.9 billion people dealing with their predispositions, all having waterfalls and throwing up and, oh my God, going through their bloody battle of, of things they have to deal with, because I had bloody nose. That was a bloody battle within my first lines of defense. Some people are going to have a bloodier battle within their body as those little microbes are fighting their way out, trying to stay in. See, when you realize the world that you live in, you just, you just don't even know what to say. You just, you just like, you know this, and then you go out there and everyone's just all oblivious. They don't, ah, you know, like, let's go to the bars, do this, do that, and go hang out together. I mean... I need a break from the world. I need a break. So my husband and I, we're going to be hanging out this weekend. And we'll see if I have any kind of fucking reaction to anything, you know. I'm sure I will, just from... That's fine. But the more I gain more intelligence from the new viruses... And I don't have my hemorrhoids anymore. I don't have the yeast infections. I don't have the constipation. It's, uh, you know, not really. You know, I'm, I'm fine with all that. Sometimes things get stuck. I'll take care of it, whatever. But I don't have the UTIs. I don't have any of the, the rashes. All that's gone. And so, and so then when I feel these viruses, it's just the fatigue and the blowing of the nose. Sneezing, watching my dog sneeze, or, or the mucus come out of her back end. And so I'll just gain more intelligence. But yeah, but I'll, I'll gain more intelligence, yes, and then I will make more connections. But I think I made the last connection because that was the secret that I was holding within, that I was too afraid to tell people. 
I bear, I told some people like through private message, maybe I might have. But yeah, you got to do the digital method, or I said it. Uh, so I said it somehow, you know, somewhere. You got to pull that shit out. Literally, you got to pull that shit out. But now there's no, there's nothing hidden. You guys know it all. You guys have the key to everything. Now you understand what antiquity is. It's a bunch of assholes. Now you know why they're called the Anunnaki. Giants are one big asshole. Oh yeah, there were giants on this earth, and they were one big asshole. Are we the little are we the little T cells and B cells that came out of the ass of the giants? Probably. <laughs> were we the asteroids that came out of their ass? Are we in somebody's are we in some giants seriously, are we in some giants rectum right now? Like little cells cleaning up after ourselves. Fighting off the little microbes that are out there in a bigger, 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 bigger situation. You don't even know. But we know how many simulations there were because we see it in all the allegories. And then you realize those people back then, Gilgamesh and Zeus and Hera and Athena, they were no different than you and me and Angelina Jolie. <laughs> Brad Pitt. Jason Momoa. All the stars. Albert Einstein was no different than Socrates. Okay? Because when you realize Socrates, how did Socrates know his stuff? Remember when I asked, how does Socrates know all these the Socratic method? It wasn't like one day he just woke up and now he knows this. No, he was taught by someone, but by who? What? Where? When? By by some women, supposedly. That was the only thing I found is like who taught Socrates? Some woman from somewhere who knows where. So did she develop Socrates and give him all the information and he became this thing? You'll never know. But now you know how it works. Nobody just has the information. No one just is born with the, all the knowledge in the world. You have to learn it. And it has to build on itself. And it's evolution, adaptation, mutation. It is everything about change and simulations, assimilation, programming, developing arguments, computer science, and biology and chemistry and physics. And it turns into politics, religion, science. Manipulating your hormones, your fatty acid, amino acid performance, and minerals. You're made up of a whole microbiome of viruses, parasites, protozoa, proteins, fungus, and bacteria. And then you realize, wow, okay, you're in a simulation. You're in a major simulation. And it can change. And you can change, too. And then you realize how many people are holding so much, so much stress within them. They're fighting battles in their body. Trying to come off like everything is okay, but they're fighting battles. And you just don't want to get caught in the crossfire. All right, I'm gonna go do my thing. My dog finally woke up. She was napping. All right, bye. <laughs>